how to implement multi-upload and multi-object creation with loops and custom functions in Flutterflow. I created a data type called picture, which has an image as an image path, an uploaded time as a date slash time, and then a creator as a document reference to a user. I've set it up like this instead of just a field, a list of pictures on a user, because for one, I want to be able to store the uploaded date and time so that we can easily sort it based on that. And then also this list has potential to get very, very long. And that's a lot to store as a list. It's better to keep it as a separate data type, just in terms of scalability. Now that I've showed you my database structure, we can head over to the UI builder. Right now I just have a grid view, three by three, which has got a bunch of images in it. I have dynamically uploaded it with a query collection to a picture where the creator is equal to the authenticated user's user reference. So basically all of the pictures associated with the current creator. Then I also have uploaded time, which is going to be in decreasing order. So the ones at the top are going to be the most recent, while the ones at the bottom are going to be older. Now let's add in the upload functionality. I'm just going to add an icon into this app bar over here. And it is going to be this upload icon. I'm going to make it size 32 and then also make it this secondary background color. Just going to add 20 pixels of padding on the side. Okay. Let's add an action. Under utilities, I want to click upload data and I want to upload slash save media, which is things like images and videos. I'm going to save this to Firebase and I want my source to be a gallery. If I leave it as camera slash gallery, I won't be able to use this when I'm on a laptop and I want to be able to do that. I am only allowing photos, not videos, and here is when I want to say allow multiple images. So I'm just going to toggle that. Perfect. So now I have the list of items set up as an array of sorts. And I want to be able to go through that list and grab each single item. If we look at creating a document in Firestore, to the picture thing, we can see that on the image field, we can actually grab that list that we uploaded under this widget state, and it's going to be this uploaded file URLs. But this is a list of image paths. We want to be able to grab the item at index and then a specific index. And essentially, we want to go through the list and keep incrementing this index until we've gone through the whole list and created documents for everything in the list. The way we need to do this is actually with a custom function. I'm just going to go ahead and delete these. So in case you aren't familiar with custom functions, it's just a little bit of code that we can write in Dart. And it can return a value. I want it to return a Boolean. And I'm going to add in two arguments. This might not make any sense now, but I promise in a second it will. Let me actually use more descriptive names. I am going to be checking if the index is less than the length of list. And both of these are going to be integers. 
Bubble comes very handy with this code Copilot, and I can just tell this AI code assistant to generate the code for me. So I want to check if index is less than length of list, return true, else return false. It generated the code, so I want to copy that over here and we can just rename the function do index checker. And I want to show you what the function can do. Let's say that we uploaded five images. Then the length of our list is going to be five. Our index will always start at zero. The first item of the list is actually at index zero and the last item is at index four in this case. So my index is zero and I want it to check if that's less than five. If this index is in the array and if it is, I'm going to create an object with the image at index zero. We can see that it is working, it returned the correct thing and now we can save it. Let's go back to our action chain here and we're going to add a loop. If you are familiar with while loops, that's what's happening here. It's going to keep, it's going to check this condition, run whatever actions are within it, and then check the condition again. And while this condition is true, it's going to keep doing that. So we are going to grab our custom function index checker. And it's going to say while the index is less than the length of list, which we can just grab that right here, all of the uploaded files and then number of items, then do these actions. So actually, right now we haven't set up the index as a variable and I'm going to set it up as a page state. Oops, not add an action. This is just a variable that lives on the page and I'm just going to call it index. I'm going to give it a default value of zero. Let's go back here. Now we can go to our custom function index checker. We can feed it our index, which is going to be under page state and then also the length of our list. Then we want to create a document in Firestore of type picture and the image associated with that is going to be the uploaded files item at index and we are going to choose the specific index of our index variable over here. I'm going to set the uploaded time to current date and time and then the creator is just going to be our authenticated users reference. Cool, so we've created a document with the item at that index, but now we need to actually increment the index to be able to create a document with the next image. The way we are going to do that is just under state management, we are going to update page state and we don't want to rebuild the current page. And then we are just going to update the index and increment it by one. And this just means that we won't reload the page because it's not really affecting any of the visual design elements. Okay, but we just want to add one more check here that will make sure that the index actually starts at zero. So I'm just going to go here and reset the value and that will reset it 
back to zero. Okay, let's try this out. One thing I overlooked is that not everyone will have their Firebase storage already set up. So in order for someone to be able to upload an image, they will need to set this up. So I'm going to just, now we can deploy these rules and we can see that it worked. Cool, we can go back to our test mode Here, I just have a folder with logos from a bunch of companies. And boom, we can see both of the things. We can try this with some more. I'm going to do the rest, that's five more. And it'll take a bit, but boom. Before I end this video, Let's just really quickly look at my data manager. And we can see that all of the pictures were uploaded and created as picture data types with the correct user and uploaded time.